Hey, Anuki here. If you'd like more co games, show your support on Twitch or join the Discord. Now, Jenkins, introduce the commanders, please. By Jove, I can, old chum. Match six ought to be a humdinger. Taking the stadium in the cool blue corners are our dashing chaps from the Allied forces. Lanza of the US forces, boasting a sky high rank of 367, has a reputation for baking cookies that send foes into a food coma. Right there in the south with Lanza, Mule, another US forces man in teal, commands his troops at rank 9. Mule, notably once outmaneuvered an entire battalion, using only his harmonica and a dummy grenade. Now grabbing <laughs> eyeballs in the daunting hues of purple and red from the north, we have the Axis commanders. Representing Africa Corps at rank 112, we have Amanda, a tough cookie who once tried to steal our precious collection of Beatles records. And let's not forget Barba Penaloza, another formidable Africa Corps commander God. standing tall at rank 182, infamously known for putting itching powder in our uniforms. As this motley crew converges on the Pacino farmlands, we can certainly expect sparks to fly. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, a little jeep's coming out. Oh, we like to see the jeep, don't we? I saw recently in the Discord, people was like saying, oh, I don't see enough of the Jeep. We should like too many people building rifles, rifles only. We need to, why aren't people building Jeeps? You know, sure, the Jeep does struggle. Struggles a little bit, but I still think there's room for it to breathe. So Mule has already gone the armored battle group. They went for the veteran crew so they can get the level one in the Jeep so they can capture territory. We all know that, but some people don't. I did actually recently talk to someone uh, who didn't know that and it was really cool because it's like you know obviously for us a lot of us veterans I feel like I'm being very generous to call myself a veteran at the moment just a massive company of heroes appreciated from a distance I guess but for people that haven't played Comedy of Heroes, there's kind of a lot of things where it's like, when you discover it, like if you're interested in the game, you go, oh wow, that's a really cool thing. I want to try that strategy now. Um, and when you think about it, like when you think about like other games, other RTS games on the market, it's kind of not like how you use something, but it's kind of more like what you build. Like if you were to say, oh, Void Rays do this hyper beam thing that ramps up in damage over time, people go, oh, I want to build Void Rays. But in Company of Heroes, there's a lot of, like, it's not about the unit. It's about what that unit can do and how you could potentially use it. And it's nice seeing people get excited by that stuff. So anyway, now that I'm finished fanboying over Company of Heroes, um, <laughs> Baba Penaloza massing up on the right-hand side. We typically do see this on Pacino where... The commanders just like focus on either side of the map and the middle kind of gets ignored for a little bit. It's just kind of like more passive capturing in the middle. Whereas on other maps you usually see like sometimes, you know, past like the 10 minute mark, the passive capturing is on the flanks. We'll see how this devolves though. A fuel point is being taken from us! Jeep just passing through the middle. Easy capturing the plus five. I think it's something that maybe people don't think about too much with the light vehicles is the plus five points since they are much faster to capture. If you have a fast vehicle that can just dart to a plus five point, that's pretty good. You don't have to spend too much time in decapturing it. And that's all you really want to do. You want to just decapture it. We're going to lose a rifle squad here, maybe to a flamethrower. Oh. I think they've managed to get away, I think. Oh, it's tough, that one. This 250 has managed to cause a mass retreat. Lanza there. And Amanda. Lanza Amanda. Seems great for Amanda, but they got to get some infantry around here to capture the territory. You can't just drive into your opponent's base, Amanda. <laughs> that was a good move. Seems like the Axis forces here are uh, really getting a lot of ground 
And they're forcing the Allies back, but they do need to capture the territory, and that's the thing that they're working on now. You can see there is a lot of territory disruption, thanks to that Jeep. All over here. All these plus five points. One, two, three, four. And I wonder if Mule is just kind of acknowledging that. Even going back to now capture this fuel point, just to trickle in a little extra income. And make it a bit harder to capture the territory. They do have <laughs> a lot of palm grems coming in. That cunning as a fox jeep, though. Driving fast down the road out of there. Oh, a little bit of a splosh. Could do with some repairs. Is it going back in for more? It is. It is hungry to capture more territory. Going really wide around the edges. It's a plus 10 one, though. It's going to take more time, and they don't have too much health left on that Jeep. It is risky. But sometimes you've got to risky for the bisky. Americans out in force. Oh, we're going to get a new American commentator at some point. And um, someone said that they're going to be called Brand because that is the most American name that they could think of. So I thought, why not Why not really double down and go Brad Bradley? <laughs> so, you know, look out for that guy. I'm still not allowed to do a German commentator. Apparently, that's, a, that's bad for optics. <laughs> I can see why. <laughs> Quad half track out here. Almost getting that 250. Look, oh, a shot could stray wide and it might have got that last hit in. Big flank coming in here. It is a well almost executed maneuver for the Allies' forces. Lanza getting up on the front whilst Mule, Mule comes in from the side. Unfortunately, though, from the side of Mule comes... I forgot the name already. <laughs> Barba Penaloza. I remember the Penaloza part. Point is being by the enemy. And yet, Lanza just keeps advancing. Even under the knowledge that massive reinforcements are on the way. Don't want to be losing squads this early on. Oh, can you make it? Can you make it get behind the building? Yes, they are in the clear, I believe. Still, it's a big retreat. I think most of the work is being done by this Jeep at the moment. They, they, literally, they are carrying the game. <laughs> Look at the damage it's already sustained. We're not allowed to call it a Jeep, though, are we? No, let's call it a Land Rover. Land Rovers are cool, aren't they? I like Land Rovers. I think Land Rovers are probably one of my favorite vehicles. Proximity alarm near our fuel point. It's fairly peaceful. We're getting mines dropped down everywhere. Get the repairs. It's nice when you see allies repairing other allies' vehicles. I think it's just sweet. It's just like, oh. Oh, they care about each other. It's just like a platonic love. <laughs> Aircraft overhead. And a Scott out here as well. We're seeing so many Scots. It's a crowd favorite. Paratroopers on the field. More. Oh, it's going to be a paradrop AT gun. Fantastic. Great call. I think the Allies can certainly do Enemy something with all this. They are out in force. Hungry for an enemy to conquer. Oh, that wasn't a mine of theirs. They stepped on an allied mine. I hear a Semavente potentially out here. Allies stepping on a mine this time. Poor Scott. Already the Allies, or at least the Americans, seeming like they have to move backwards now. It's a lot of Germans to overcome. But they do have Lanza nearby, but Lanza is stepping on mines as well. 
Now, as the Africa Corps, you do feel like you end up with a surplus of munitions. I really, honestly, I don't know why this is. I've never really done like a full, thorough investigation, but I just, look, I just have munitions all the time. Mines are a great way to up your game. If you're floating munitions on any faction, drop them mines down. Bostatori using smoke to advance straight to the AT gun, crossing the flames, standing on their own flames. I don't think that hurts them more. Once the AT gun is out of the picture, the Flag Berlin can pick up the pieces. Oh, Grossatori taking a grenade, though. That's not good to lose that squad. AT gun for a Guastatori? I can never recommend trying to pick up an AT gun whilst under fire. Quite literally. In this circumstance, though, it works out for Lanza. So we did manage to force the axes back. An infantry support weapon back here as well. Victory points looking solid. 312 for the axis. They managed to recap one of the victory points. On the right hand side of the map, two victory points over to the allies. Currently 441 tickets and standing strong despite what I would say is their suffering so far. With two M8 Scots out on the field, though, that is going to give pause for thought. Amanda did lose quite a lot there, it seems. They're not looking too healthy. Their army all the way down to four people. Well, not exactly four people. Four squads! Full of people. That's uh, 12, 16, 19. Just 19 blokes. Not a lot. Walking all the way out here to repair. Oh, we have a recovery vehicle as well. Oh, are we going to steal a flag burling? It might just happen. Amanda coming in to investigate. Straight into two Scots load of damage. Sad times. The Axis have got to make some kind of move here. They might have two victory points, but not for long. Two squads of rifles advancing. Uh, what is their purpose? Their purpose is to immediately retreat. I kind of think it's just, it's better to like advance with one squad at the front. If you're looking for vision and you are quite often looking for that vision, we did steal that flag burling. If you advance with two squads, you know, think of it as like a V formation. But if you advance with two squads and it turns out there's danger, losing a rifle squad there as well. And, you know, at least it's only one squad that ends up retreating and you can then reposition the other squad so that they stay in the fight. I think the Axes are going to be so annoyed at seeing this flank burling. <laughs> Damn. The infantry support weapon should maybe fire on the infantry inside the building. They'll do a lot of damage there. There we go, taking out the chimney. Almost. <laughs> what are you doing, Scott? You can't get inside the building. You're not a person. Oh, they're firing through the building. Through the window? What incredible shot is that? It's it's hacks, I call hacks. You shouldn't be allowed to do that. I don't like this. <laughs> stop, make it stop. You're ruining my immersion. Oh, mule. We have a Sherman out here as well. It's going to be a problem, isn't it? I don't think we have too much in the, the bank for anti-tank power here. 
Amanda has one AT gun. Penaloza has... Oh, the promise of a Panzer III coming out. Whose blood is this? <laughs> Jesus. It's so dark. It's like vampire blood. Now, I don't believe the Germans had vampires. But I know someone that might know. Jenkins, do you know anything about the Germans having vampires? It's just that I see a lot of blood on the battlefield that's really, really dark that it couldn't possibly come from a human. It's going to be a challenge for Jenkins to respond to, I believe. Oh, finishing off the squad gets a AT grenade in return as soon as the Panzer III pops out. We're stealing a soldier stuck in the tracks there. Good heavens, Inuki. Vampires <laughs> in the ranks of the Wehrmacht, you say? <laughs> yeah! Now that's a tickler. While I can't claim to have spotted any bloodsuckers in my time in the trenches, war does have its share of grisly sights. That awfully dark blood could be due to a dozen ordinary reasons. Maybe it's just oil from a kaput panzer, or the effect of mud and grime mix. Or it could be down to Fritz having a bad case of beetroot stew for supper. <laughs> But we Brits hold our own scare tactics. <laughs> Why? I've heard tales of the Queen bending iron bars with her bare hands. Now that's enough to make any bloodsucker quiver in their jackboots. Ooh! Oh, that was nasty. But it's probably just beetroot on the ground. <laughs> Thanks, Jenkins, for the insight. Reversing Scott! delivers a blow, but it's got no kills to show. What's happening over here? What is this? What are you doing here? <laughs> oh yeah, they had a... we're talking about the Queen in the present. So Queen Elizabeth was a mechanic and a, I think, a medic truck driver during the war. Of course, she was just a princess then, but obviously... We're talking in the past tense, because the war has already happened. We've got some supply dropping down here into the base. Nice to see. Axis all conquering the territory. Mule is having to reposition their forces from the center of the map to try and respond to this, though. There's the Scots. Called into action. Mm, being called into not action. Nope, they're just going to sit in the middle of the map. Fair enough, we want the victory points. That's all that really matters, and we hold two of those for now. <laughs> he might be fabricating stories. Nah, Jenkins wouldn't lie. <laughs> I mean, thank goodness you're just saying about that, you know, about Jenkins. Because if you were saying that about the Queen, good lord, I don't know what she would do to you. Jenkins, what would the Queen do to someone that was uh, saying traitorous things? Like, you know, the Queen isn't as powerful as some people say. You better watch yourself. Panzer threes moving straight through the middle of the town. And they're going to win against Scots for sure, for sure. The chase is on. Heavens above, Inuki. <laughs> well, while I'm almost certain Her Majesty would remain as composed as a chapel mouse, those spouting such scandalous jabberwocky would surely face her royal wrath. The Queen, bless her cotton socks, is as sturdy as a brick house and twice as formidable. I wouldn't be surprised if she'd challenged the traitor to a friendly game of Punch the Panzer. <laughs> I can almost see her now, rolling up her regal sleeves, <laughs> static electricity crackling about her as she stares down a tiger tank. Those who underestimate her royal majesty should prepare for repercussions or get ready for a spot of tank-tossing schooling. I'd pay a pretty penny to see that, I can tell you. <laughs> who wants to play Punch the Panzer? What a game the Queen plays. And, you know, she definitely wins that. We lose the recovery truck. 
We did also lose a Panzer III. We're losing... Oh my god, there's just explosions everywhere. That was a huge bombing run. And there's just bits and pieces flinging everywhere. Because we can't contain all the action in a single screen space. It's impossible. As soon as the carnage settles, though, we'll analyze the damage dealt. For now, we just bear witness to the ultimate carnage of Company of Heroes at its fullest. It was like a column of action. What a crime scene. All right, the dust has settled. Let's, uh... <laughs> Let's try and pick apart what the hell. We lose a Scott in there. I saw a Panzer III get destroyed. Do we lose both of the Panzer III's? I believe we do. Because that one Panzer III kind of went back into the action trying to do something. I don't know, maybe trying to call in something. I don't know what its line of reasoning was. Maybe they just wrote it off and said, hey, it's going to be destroyed. That's the other one. The guy on there. Ugh. Hunched over. More supplies being called in to fuel this war. New recovery vehicle out here. And it can't recover the old one, I think, because it... It's gone. We need the wreckage. We need the soul of the vehicle. <laughs> Without a soul, you cannot possibly bring a vehicle back from the dead. Our victory point is being neutralized by the enemy. The Axis did have a triple cap for a little bit of time. We're bringing it down to 333 for the Allies, to 212 for the Axis. Got a mechanized force out here. Top side of the map with the double Guastatory flamethrowers. Absolutely scorchier work. Um, scorching their friends in the vehicle, but they don't seem to mind. It just makes them go faster. Damn it. <laughs> we all know this. Flame stickers on your tank. Make it go faster. I think that's probably like one of the Axis abilities as well. Just put like stickers on your tanks to make them go into overdrive. <laughs> Have kept at a victory point. Double paratroopers with MGs. Working with the Sherman tank. All too common of a sight I see in my games. Because I like to do that as well. The old tech skip to Shermans. With the paratrooper buddies. I'm not gonna mind that flamethrower squad whatsoever. Not a threat. They have the victory point on the side, so they're now just trying to get into a, uh, a flank on the central side. Get some vision down in here. We got 200 munitions as well in the bank, and I can see a carpet bombing run ready to go again. But we gotta do that carpet bomb at a good moment. Like now is not a good time. We want the enemy to try and commit to an engagement. That's really what we're looking for. Whenever you use big abilities, commit to an engagement and then use that ability. And you might just surprise yourself. Right now, it's not going to be possible for the enemy to commit to an engagement because there's not that many forces on the field. Maybe Mule can? Like, keep the enemies tied up in combat? But maybe they can't. The Axis, they're not... They're not going for it. We do have a 36 back here. The Shermans should be kind of panicking at the site. A carpet bomb would work here. Yeah. There's no escaping this. Will the 36 get another shot off? It does miss. Oh, can I not have so much screen shake? <laughs> it's just the 36 that is decrewed, though. We can get that picked back up, no problem whatsoever. Are the Allies going to give them the time of day to do that, though? Because I think they try and finish it off. It's not working very well, though, is it? Grens 
get on board. It doesn't have to swivel around too much, and we lose the upgunned Sherman. Panzer 3s come a-knocking. They move over to the central victory point in the hopes to give enough fire support to allow their infantry to go capture that. Oh, we've stolen a Panzer III as well. Wow, these recovery vehicles doing some good work. We've got all the anti-tank they need here, even a bazooka squad. The artillery keeping the allies at bay. Only on this victory point, though. Up here, rifle squad capturing that other victory point. They got 169 tickets to take out. It's not too far to go, but it does feel like Lanza and Mule are struggling on the infantry the front. And you need infantry to capture territory. Who knew? Territory lost. I even got some back capping back here that they had uh, happened to them. Territory sector out of contact. Yeah, I should adjust the screen shake in the settings. This one rifle squad is sticking around for a long time. It's because they're waiting for reinforcements. Very well played there from Mule. Didn't even lose a guy. Didn't even flinch. They're still going like there's so many Germans there. And it's just this six-man squad is like, I don't care. Still not one dead. What are they made out? There we go. <laughs> oh, now we're feeling it. Now we're feeling it. We pushed a little bit too far. <laughs> Four guys on like no health though. Over on the other side of the map. Predictive grenade. It was it was a well-placed grenade. Didn't do enough damage, though. Sometimes grenades be weird like that. Now there's just like four flamethrowers, one paratroopers. And yet somehow the paratroopers are just made out of what? Titanium? I just watched a, a, a paratrooper squad. Um, getting grilled by four flamethrowers and the paratroopers just didn't take any casualties. What the hell's going on, Jenkins? I'm seeing a few too many tanks die to these stationary flax. Oh, God. Great work from the Flak 36. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle in Nuki. That's a head scratcher and no mistake. But as they say, it's all a maze within a puzzle wrapped in an enigma. Eh? <laughs> Could very well be those Yank paratroopers were pumped full of more grit than a gravel pit. Or maybe they practiced the old stop, drop and roll technique that my old mum taught me. Oh yeah, that was it. Then again, it could be a case of Lady Luck grinning down on them. As our dearly beloved queen says, in this war, one needs the luck of a seven-legged rabbit on a clover-filled field. Supposedly, she applies the same logic when facing a pack of German shepherds single-handed. <laughs> Okie dokie. My team go 88. GG. Oh, Penaloza is gone. No, Penaloza. Get back here! Get back here and fight! <laughs> you know, the 88s weren't doing badly at all. Alright, well. Amanda feels like they're playing 1v2. Well, they are now. They're, but they get... It's over! <laughs> hey, Vivi here. I edit and upload the videos here on Ironcast. If you want to see a Nuki cast more, then like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, come along to the Discord, do anything to let them know. Anuki would love to cast more if you'd like to see more.